anytime Google introduces a tool that makes campaign creation a lot more efficient, I'm on board. And that's what we're going to talk about today. There is a fairly newer tool called the Google Ads Asset Library. And this is an account level tool that helps you manage all of the images that you would need for a variety of campaign types that do require images. Some examples could be responsive display ads, universal app campaigns, some YouTube campaigns, and more. So in this video, we're going to show you where the asset library lives. We're going to show you a few different ways of how you can upload your images to the asset library and how you can organize them to make it make sense the way you want to manage your account and find your images to have them be reusable in a variety of different campaigns. And then we will just show you a few different campaign types that use the asset library or can use the asset library and how you can access images that you have previously uploaded when creating new ads. Most likely the main thing you will be uploading to the asset library will be images. That is why I wanted to start on this screen. And even though it says Google ads editor, it still has all the ad specs and image sizes needed. So here's the URL on the screen right now of where you can go and find this page. If you want to start prepping images for each of the different campaign types that you may be running within your account, you can see for display ads, I'm going to skip the main image ads and look at the specs for the responsive display ads for both the image and the logo. You can also add images to the universal app campaign ads. So the first few options are display ads appearing on apps. They'll give you the dimensions there, but also we get specs for actual app campaigns. Next, you can get specs for video ads. The one on top is going to be for your companion banner. And then the second one will be outstream ads because you will need an image for that type of YouTube campaign. And we do have a video about outstream ads. You can check that one here. Next, if we look at local ads, you can add a variety of images as well as a mandatory logo. Then we have discovery ads and you can see there is a variety of what you can do. There are a few ad formats for discovery ad. There's the main discovery ad, which is going to be the first two. You do have the option to choose a carousel, which is going to be the third and fourth one. And now since Gmail ads is part of discovery, there's all the specs for Gmail. And then the bottom of this page, you will find image extensions. We do have another video about image extensions. You can watch that one here if you want to learn more about them, but those are pretty easy to add. Now, one thing that wasn't included in that list was performance max. Within your performance max campaigns, you do have the opportunity to build an asset group that's different than the asset library I'm going to talk about very soon. So here are the image sizes typically needed for a performance max campaign. You can see some images are only available for certain types of campaigns within performance max, like the one on the top right, the square image, it's only available for store visits. But once you know what type of campaigns you're going to run, you have collected all of your assets. Now you can start uploading them to Google ads. So let's hop into the main Google Ads interface and I'll show you where you can find the asset library. Within Google Ads, head up to your tools and settings. Then under shared library, it's currently at the very bottom of that column. So let's jump into the library. Now the images you see right here are ones that we have used in previous videos. So already within your account, whatever images and logos that you have already uploaded to Google Ads should appear here. But if you are brand new to Google Ads, you haven't uploaded anything to your account, you can start uploading your assets by clicking on the blue plus button. So the Pay Media Pros YouTube channel recently refreshed our logo. If we wanted to upload that to the system, we can click on File Upload. I skipped the part where I was searching through my files on my computer, and now we just added them to the asset library. If we go ahead and start creating any sort of TrueView in-stream campaigns, I'll automatically have our custom companion banner that we can add. There's our logo. The square logo size is going to fit most of the logo assets within the campaigns, but for any of the more horizontal specs, we'll be able to use our YouTube channel banner. That's how simple it is to start uploading images. But even with just a few demos that we've created, just added a bunch of images that clearly have nothing to do with what this account is for. If you're constantly changing out images and look at all the different campaign types that now need images, you don't want to have to scroll and scroll and scroll when you're going through the asset library to find the images within the account. So the asset library now makes it easy for you to start organizing all of your images into proper folders. So I'm going to go back up to the blue plus button and I'm going to create a new folder. I just added a name for the folder and now I'm going to create it. Now to start adding images to the folder, I'm going to jump in it. And now if I click on the blue plus button again, any new image that I upload will be added to the Joe speaking folder. So let me add some here. And there's a few different options. So if I go back up to the main asset library, we see we get a menu towards the top here. 
we now start to see some of the images within the folder because it is not empty anymore. Now I know I don't have a ton of images in there, but just think of this example for your own account. Let's say you do have a folder or one category that just has a ton of different images in it. You can go over to the top right corner of one of your folders, click on the three dots, and then you can search within that folder. Here within the filters, I can search for a particular asset name, a certain dimension of it, a certain file size, the date that it was uploaded, a variety of different ways. And then you can do something like name contains, and that's just one of the events I've spoken at. So now that you know how you can filter and search for the different assets within the library, it may give you different ideas of how you may want to organize or categorize your folders within the tool. Maybe you'll just want to have one folder with all of your logos. Maybe you want to split up your folders by the different dimensions. So if you're making a lot of YouTube campaigns, you can have a folder for all of your companion banners, a folder for all of your outstream images, potentially a different folder for all your carousel images for your discovery ads, a different folder for all of your Gmail assets, that type of categorization. Or maybe you don't care what campaign type it goes into. You just want to bunch it together in themes, just like I did with myself speaking. You see you have that option. All right, so let's head back to the asset library and I'll show you a different example that you can upload. Click on the blue plus button again, and there you see the option for folder upload. So we get this all the time. Michelle and I do manage accounts, but we're not designers by any means. So we typically rely on our clients to provide us with creative images to use for our ads. So whether they shoot us a zip file in an email, send us a link of a bunch of images we can download from Dropbox, we typically have folders of images. If the images that you get from a client or however you're downloading them are already categorized the way that you want it, you can just upload that entire folder. And then all the assets that are included within that folder will be uploaded as long as they meet Google specs. It's probably a little cut off on my screen. I can't control where the pop-up comes up, but I selected a whole folder of Michelle photos. So now they're saying, do you want to upload all 45 files within that folder? And yes, I do. Since it is 45 different images, it could take a little bit to load. So there we see, I had to refresh a little bit. It was taking long, it probably took about a minute for those photos to upload, which I know really isn't that long, but I'm impatient. But there we see, it automatically created a folder and it is using the same name of the folder that I have on my desktop. So I don't have to create a new folder first and then upload the images separately like I did with the Joe speaking example. So now I'm just going to end the video by hopping into a few different campaign types just so we can see how we can access the images that we uploaded to the asset library while building out some ads. All right, I am in a display campaign. Let's create a new ad. This is the responsive display format. So we can see we can add up to 15 different images. So if I click on images, it's going to pull up our asset library. And there's pretty much everything new that we have added. So here's where I can choose the new image that I uploaded. It's already ready to go. If I want to look at the two different ratios, I know the images that I uploaded aren't exactly how it is. So we still have the option to crop it here. But if you want to save some time later, avoid all the cropping that you would have to do, go to the link I shared in the beginning of this video and make sure that you have images that fit exactly what you need for each ad format. So I'm good with these. I know we can add up to 15, but I'm going to save this for now. And then there's your logos. I'm going to save this one. And there's the preview of what a really basic ad would look like. Let's just look at one more. Here, I'm in an app install ad. You can see all the different Star Wars assets. Those are all the images I use. Still the same from when I created that video. But we can go and edit our assets. I can edit it if I want to add more. And there, it's going to pull up our asset library. So here, I can try to add a few more, see what happens. Here, I'm forced to crop it, save it. And it's easy enough to correct edit, or start building new assets for your campaigns because you already have the images uploaded. And you can see how easy it is to prep your images, upload them to Google Ads before you even want to launch a campaign, just so you have everything that you need stored in one place. And Google has said the asset library currently supports just images, but they also said, which is more interesting, that more asset types will be available in the future. You can access the asset library in the tools and setting like I showed, like in the examples here. And then all the examples I showed towards the end of this video were for editing current campaigns that we already built from previous demo videos. But you will also be able to access the asset library when creating new campaigns and when you're asked to build your ads before you publish it. If you're constantly switching out your ads and you use a variety of different types of campaigns within Google Ads, this is clearly a benefit if you reuse the same assets. So for right now, that's pretty much what this tool can do. But as Google has stated, we should expect some updates and new features sometime down the line. If you have any questions on how we use the asset library, please let us know in the comments below.
Thanks for watching our video. If you found it useful, give us a thumbs up below. We release a new video at least once a week, so if you want to see more from the Paid Media Pros channel, be sure to subscribe.